Good morning, this is Andrew Mount for GG. It's day two of the Cheltenham Festival and I'm here with TV's Rory Delaghi, uh, final furlong podcast regular, GG columnist, um, lots of ticks and boxes there. So how was day one, Rory? Uh, day one was slightly frustrating. Um, some of the right horses, not necessarily the right races, and uh, the photograph on the first went the wrong way for me. But um, we survived to fight another day. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, I think uh, most people were against uh, Shishkin. Uh, apart from Kevin O'Malley, he was uh, he was sweet on that one. But uh, everyone else seemed to be with the uh, runner-up. Now today, what are we doing in the first race? Envoy Allen, yes or no? <laughs> uh, well, if, if it's a yes or no, then he's he's uh, he's a yes. But I think more than one way to skin a cat, of course. And I think looking through the um, the field for this, Sporting John looks a looks a, a very straightforward each way bet, doesn't he? Pretty much a bet yeah. of nothing. Yeah, he's one I've put up as well uh, on GG as well over the son of Camas at, uh, for a much smaller stakes. Mm -hmm. uh, working on the assumption that the wind dot might have done something for his uh, chances. Yeah, that might help him. I could see Decor yeah. Irlande at the top actually running well and finishing sort of sixth or seventh, but there's no uh, there's no money for that, sadly, unfortunately. Right, the second race is the RSA. I've gone round in circles with this. Uh, I was with Manella Indo at the preview night I did, but I just don't want to back him at the prices. Is there anything you can well, I'm, see I'm, against him at a bigger I'm, price? I'm much the same in that my gut feeling is that Manella Indo will, will um, prove himself to be the best of these. But based on what he's done so far, he shouldn't be the price that he is. Um, we're very much putting our faith in Henry de Bromhead um, with a similar preparation to last year when he won the Albert Bartlett. But he was 50s then. And he's sort of three to one, 130 now. So big difference there. I thought the, the one that was overpriced was Easy Game um, for Willie Mullins. There was talk about him not running in this race um, at the weekend, going for the Marsh instead. Um, but he's turned up here, and his price hasn't moved an awful lot. And I think his his anti post price um, really sort of figured that he wouldn't come here. He beat um, Alaho at Leperstown over Christmas over two mile five. Um, and to be honest, I thought he should have beaten Faheen in the Flow Gas last time. I both of those over two mile five. I think he'll stay the, the, the longer trip and I think he's got more to come. So 11 or 12 to 1 about him this morning looked too big to me. Right, I'll put him in my place part along with Slate House and the Coral Cup. This looks uh, typically uh, competitive. Uh, <coughs> Canardier for me, I've also had a saver on Protector at. Uh, Tom Messenger, Dan, Sister, uh, Dan Skelton's assistant, was very keen on this one at our preview night. And right, what have you got here? You got a couple against the field? I yeah, I definitely have Protector at in the place part. Um, he's, you know, he's run several good races here. Obviously, um, won, won a race, lost a race, and won it again. Um, in January. That was on New Year's Day, of course. <clears throat> and uh, he's, he's pretty solid, he's improving. Um, I prefer to be with slightly older horses. I would say he's a five year old, but he's pretty tough for one. Canardia I did look at as well because he, he ran a very good fifth in this race last year and yeah, had he, trouble in running. He's hampered beaten two and a half lengths. He's a few pounds high, but he's since uh, moved to Willie Mullins. You'd think he's going to manage to get the sort of seven to ten pounds improvement out of him. Yeah, that's perhaps. That's my, that's my slight concern. I think Dermot McLaughlin, who had him, did a very, very good job with him. He was also a winner on good ground here last season. Um, at the October meeting, and I thought Dermot placed him really well. So I think, you know, he's, he's a player. I wonder whether he might just be underpriced because people are expecting um, Willie Mullins to improve one from a trainer they may not have heard of. And I think maybe he doesn't do um, justice to his previous trainer. Same ownership, of course. And I don't think Willie's had him very long. He's only had him a few weeks, I think. So. Um, but so there you go. So he, he comes into the equation as well, as do about 20 others, quite frankly. Uh, Dan de Company, you've got to mention her because she looks well handicapped anyway. Um, about a five to one favourite now, I think. Yeah, she's she's too short for me to buy. But you know, again, if you're looking if you're looking to do multiples of play spots and stuff like that, there, you've got to bear her in mind. Um, they, they they went to an appeal to get her, her handicap mark down two prime, which is hardly essential. <laughs> um, but they made a point of that. Um, she won well um, in December. She's won twice now from five from four starts at the track. Uh, she ran very well. One of the she was disappointing on her debut here. She was an all-time favourite for Novice Hurdle. Aside from that, she's run three times, run very well every time, um, and she's got a really good weight based on her ability. So I, she deserves to be favourite. She's you, the one you to You convinced beat. me to stick her in the play spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the, the play spot is it's going to be an absolute nightmare <coughs> this race. But it's, it's I don't like I like throwing out dodgy favourites like um, you know horses you think aren't going to jump, for example. But don't chuck them out because you think they're too short because it's an irre it's an, an irrelevance in the play spot if they've got a solid chance. And the Queen Mother, um, Deffy or Shaq and Porsche? I'm all over Shaq and Poor Swire. He's already beaten Deffy, of course. He met once and he beat him well at Punchestown. There was a question of whether that was Different you know end of season. Perhaps. Yeah, no, it's not going to be it's not going to be massively different. Not be Shaq and Poor Swire. Now has done it on on um, uh, on soft ground and on on ground that was pretty much good at Leopardstown last time out. And I thought I thought it was really impressive in the in the Dublin Chase. You've got to watch that from the start. They went a hell of a gallop early on. 
What really impressed me that day was that his jumping was absolutely perfect he, until the last fence when he made a minor mistake. And when we tend to um, look back at videos to judge horses, we always look at the closing stages, yeah. and the closing stages <coughs> that race aren't hugely impressive. Well, because in the Racing Post website, you get the option. You get the option of doing that. It's, it's an awful lot quicker, yeah. um, but it doesn't always give you the full picture, and that's one of those races where it doesn't. Right, and in the 410. Um, the cross country. This is a little bit uh, more competitive than the Queen Mother, but, uh, but uh, perhaps not. Really. Well, um, there's plenty of people out there on, on, on the um, previous circuit who thought the straight forecast, uh, Tiger Roll and Easy's Land, probably pay around seven to two might be the way to attack this race. I thought perhaps Laying uh, might bite for a place if you if you think yeah, two of the three places are going to be taken by the exactly. Team there's not much to play for there. Yeah, yeah. Both might bite, and I'd say Yanworth as well, who is short enough. Yeah. Are, are dodgy propositions for the place okay. there. Before we carry on to record, I think you could lay about three to one, might bite the three place market, and uh, Yamworth around about seven to two. So maybe um, Dutch lay the pair might be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Easy's Land looks, looks like the, you know, the natural successor to Tiger Rule, doesn't he? He was very impressive here in December. Um, the only slight worry there is, is you know, he was given a real swashbuckling ride, I would say, by Jonathan Pluganu, who work. was throwing him at his fences. And there's a slight worry that he might throw him at one. Um, too far out, yeah. or he'd take too much of a chance, and he could end up um, losing Mr. Pluganu at some stage. Um, but in terms of his ability um, and his, his age, he's definitely the coming thing. Uh, I would, if I was again playing the place board or getting involved in that, you shouldn't need an extra place there. But Urjan de Gregain, um he's got a course record of first, third, second, third, seconds. 22 pounds better off for the horse who beat him <coughs> here in November. Um, he runs all his best races at Cheltenham, he's got lots of cross country for him in France he's as well. About five to two of them. Yeah, I think he's really solid for a place. What he does every year is he absolutely tanks around at the back of the field, cruises into contention coming to the, the, the stuffed hurdle, and then doesn't find an awful lot up the hill. But by, the time, the <laughs> by the time he gets there, he's usually in a place anyway. Um, so I expect him again to travel really well and maybe to be left behind up the hill, but that'll still be enough to get him third or yeah, you know, you can four places. Ra rather than have a win bet in the race, I think I might just back in place only. And the 450, the Boodles, um, the Fred Winter, Anything strong here? Well, I really liked one in this race, but um, so, do, so do various other people. Oh, Blacko, um, Blacko yeah, yeah, we did a, we did a podcast last week. The price has been tailored this morning. He was 20s and bigger um, last week uh, when we discussed this, and I couldn't understand why he wasn't shorter, and well, now he is shorter. He's, yeah. he's been tailored as well, and he's into 5 to 1 or 11 to 2. So. Interesting stat about Alan King's hurdlers, one from 121 since 2009 of the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, Although I've bet several of them, uh, he's had loads of seconds, and the winner was 33 to 1, so I don't think that's usually statistical significant. A bit like that Huntingdon, um, last time out Huntingdon runners coming to Chelsea. Exactly. Again. Again, and again, you've, you've got to look at what kind of races they're running in. And if you're if you're examining the runners in races like this and the Martin Pipe, um, you know, you're, you're looking at huge fields, very competitive races. Willie Mullins, for example, has you know, won from 35 in recent times in the, in the, uh, the Coral Cup. Um, it's not going to stop him winning one if it comes down to it. The stats can be slightly misleading in that you think they look very strong. They don't necessarily cover a huge number of races. And again, if you look at Alan King's record, uh, in terms of places, um, it's, it's pretty yeah, good. It's pretty good. And a lot of his horses are running at least 25, 26 runner handicaps, and you know, you don't have to do too much wrong to be out of the frame, do you? So, yeah, Blacko for, for you. I'm, I'm with Knight Edition, and I've thrown a small each way arrow at uh, Gerolamo Cardano, who came out of that uh, same race. As yeah, well. I, would, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him win just because uh, it's a rookie trainer, DJ Jeffries. Yes, yeah, Gerald Lamar Cardano, and that'll be a good story for the meeting as well. Excellent. And finally, the bumper. Uh, I'm with the um, the the, the, uh, the Phillies and Mares, um, Panic Attack, and the Glancing Queen, particularly the Glancing Queen, fifth last year to Envoy Allen. Really strong race that. Uh, Abracadabra second, um, Time Hill third. Sorry, Ab Abracadabra was fourth. Yes. Uh, Time Hill third, and uh, the Gl Glancing Queen was um, sort of hampered there as well. Perhaps unlucky not to get fourth. Won the uh, Big Mares bumper, 20 runners at uh, Aintree next time out, and this is her first run since. So. Uh, Anything else to uh, in the race that you like? Yeah, well, I, mean, I I liked the favourite before he was favourite for this, but the price has gone now. I don't really bike, I don't like biking the horses at that kind of price. But he was very impressive over, over um, Christmas at Leopardstown. He's already won over two and a half miles as well, so he's got lots in his favour. But again, that's too short a price for me to be biking at Cheltenham. I thought Queensbrook was very impressive on her debut at Gorham, but that was in a, on a really wet track uh, where she was asked to, to stretch in the last furlong and went 21 lengths clear. That's a remarkable performance, but. Whether she can repeat that so quickly after that is a, is a slight question. Well, I, know, I know Gordon likes her a lot, uh, but again, you're looking at shortage prices there, and I, I'd be with you. I think the Glancing Queen, 
Um, there tends to be buzz horses for this. She hasn't been one, even though she's got the form in the book. And I think she's a solid each way selection. We talked about Alan year. King. Of those 120 odd um, hurdlers, he's um, only had one winner from in the last sort of uh, 10, 11 years. Only 12 were mares, and six of those uh, finished in the uh, the first sort of four. Yeah. Uh, often a big prize is Midnight Tour, 33 to one, beaten half a length um, in the in the mares race a couple of years ago. Traded at 1.36 in running. So Indeed, yeah, I remember it well, don't you? Hopefully, I have some more luck this time. Right, thank you very much, Rory. Have an My excellent pleasure, day, and uh, catch you tomorrow. Thank Cheers. You. Bye.